Oh, boy, 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 boy. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot even sit here and tell you that Thor Love and Thunder was good. Because it was mid, Chief. It was mid. Now, the story itself was fine. That part was good. The action was fantastic. I loved the action, and I didn't mind the plot. The things that bothered me the most about Thor Love and Thunder boils down to three simple things. Thing number one is why, oh why, does Marvel use the same artist for its Marvel movies all the time? And there is nothing wrong with Guns N' Roses. They're a classic band. And I love some of their music, but come on, how many times can you use Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, and Sweet Child of Mine before it gets repetitive? Marvel, as a music fan, let me give you some advice, okay? Choose some different type of music, okay? It ain't gonna hurt you, I promise. Second thing that irritated me about this movie was there were too many forced jokes. They were cringeworthy. I went to the 210 showing and literally, I don't know if people know what comedy is anymore, but every single joke people were laughing at every little joke. Come on, it was forced. I could smell the cringe coming off of these jokes. I'm sorry, I grew up with Jeff Foxworthy, Bill Ingvall, Larry the Cable Guy, I've appreciated Burt Kreischer, Bill Burr, I mean, I know comedy and I know how jokes hit. This movie's jokes felt forced. I don't appreciate it. That's frustrating when the movie sort to force in jokes that they know they don't work, but you know what? It didn't work for me. And I think the last negative thing I have about this movie is uh, the goats annoyed the piss out of me. Goats don't sound like that. When they're whining, they're not yelling. They go, bah, bah, not, nah, 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 wah, wah, wah. They're not yelling. I know these are supposed to be mythical goats, and I understand the premise of what they were trying to do, but no. The goats were freaking annoying. Shut up, please. So, yeah, other than the obvious annoying music choice is the annoying goats, the forced comedy, those were the negatives. And like I said, I enjoyed. The fight scenes were great. The Marvel, the Guardians of the Galaxy cameo was amazing. Thor himself, uh, I don't know. I'm not much of a Thor guy. I, just, I, I don't know what it is. I just can't get behind Thor as a Marvel character. And I've watched the original last night. I'm pretty much done with Ragnarok for Thor. I just can't seem to get into Thor. I think Thor is probably the MCU's kind of weakest supervillain, I guess. This is coming from a newbie who's still exploring it, so... Try not to hurt me too much. But I think the center of this whole movie was Mighty Thor. In my opinion, she stole most of the movie. I really enjoyed Mighty Thor in this movie. I loved the real life 
storyline about the cancer that hit home with me. That worked. I enjoyed that. And <laughs> there was one scene in the movie where, guess what? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Thor gets nakey nakey. Which I'm sure every female is going to love that. And I'm sure somebody, some other people will. And I enjoy Chris Helmsworth's acting. It looks like he is enjoying playing the role, the role of Thor. So yeah, pretty much that's all my thoughts on Thor, Love, and Thunder. My final verdict for Thor, Love, and Thunder is a 6 out of 10. It's a mid-movie. It's probably the weakest one. I'm sorry. So there you go, guys. That has been my thoughts on Thor, Love, and Thunder. If you enjoyed this video, smack it with a like. Sorry about the um, glaring of the lighting here in my room. And make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please. It's free. My videos aren't getting pushed out because people aren't subscribing. And they're not ish sharing it with their friends. Please help me out. I would really, really appreciate your support. So, until the next time, that's a wrap, baby!